Um, what makes the 1959 Les Paul special? This one specifically to me is that it was the first one that I bought uh, when our band uh, started to have some success and I always wanted one because of course Jimmy Page had one and the, the legend around them and I, I bought this one up in uh, Everett from Danny's Music um, a, a while ago in the 90s and um, it just played amazingly and, and I could afford it and it was a lot cheaper back then. Um, I've used it on you know uh, many records and toured the world with it. Apparently it was, it was bought here in 1967 or 68 um, for, from a pawn shop in Seattle, Washington, which I never knew until we started doing the research. So admit, that means a lot to me too, because it was here. I mean, I, I just felt like, you know, when I could start affording guitars, I wanted to get a Les Paul. I have, I, you know, I play all sorts of guitars, but, you know, I want Les Pauls for certain sounds that, you know, you can't get anywhere else, especially 59s. Well, the, the particular place, the, the, the place I remember the most playing this Les Paul is uh, during the song Alive at the end of our shows. I always play this because it's got the perfect tone uh, for the lead and for the rhythm parts. Um, you know, I, I can use both pickups throughout the song and um, it's very, it just works perfectly for Alive. And uh, the spe specific thing I remember is this uh, 2009 when we, um, this is a Danny Clinch photo, when we closed down the Spectrum in Philadelphia, this was the last night and the confetti cannons were going off. And this is either Rockin' in the Free World or Live, and I'm pretty sure it was Live, but um, that's, you know, I have a picture of it that I love with the Les Paul, so that's my memory. You know, there's many, but this one is, I specifically remember, last night closing down this Philadelphia Spectrum, which is a big deal. I started playing guitar in 19, probably 19, the summer of 1978, early 1979, I was 11 years old, and um, I played, uh, I, had a, I had a Mateo Les Paul, which was $100, it was black. Um, I played immediately at 11 and a half, I joined a band called Warrior. We, uh, you know, we did covers of Kiss, and we did some Cheap Trick, and we, we had a couple originals. Um, and one was called the Wah Song, because Rick would play his bass through a Wah, and that was a big deal, wow, wow. So at any rate, we would play it in eighth, seventh and eighth grade at the Eckstein Talent Show. Um, Jenny Weintraub, I, uh, her birthday party was the first, I played at her birthday party, it was the first paying gig I ever had. I was 11 and a, 11 and a half, or tw no, I was 12 probably. I took lessons from a guy named Mike Wilson here in Seattle, for, and, and I have to give him some credit because he, he kept my interest going, and, and as much as you know, he wanted me to learn my scales and things, I kept coming back to him and go, but I wanna learn Kiss songs, and I wanna do Aerosmith, and, I, you know, he, but he was, he was very, he, he was over in Fremont and he was a good teacher and he, he kept my, kept my interest. I was a Cub Scout and then I got into Kiss and then I wanted to do that. So I went just directly to music. And so it, my parents w said, okay, if you want to, I'm just giving you a little backstory. Yeah. If you want to play guitar, you need to take lessons and you need to keep your grades up in school. So I took lessons, didn't necessarily keep my grades up in school very well. Cause all I did was play music and we would play hours and hours and years and years at the Friel House. So I started when I was 11, I played in bands immediately and took lessons for about a year and a half and quit and just focused on playing in a band. 